20th Constitutional Amendment of the Sri Lankan Constitution, which would give sweeping executive powers to the Lankan President, now faces a judicial challenge. The Rajapaksa government had presented the contentious amendment bill in Parliament earlier this week. Now, almost about half a dozen petitions have been filed against the amendment on a daily basis ever since it's been presented in the Parliament. So far, there have been 18 petitions that have challenged the constitutional validity of this amendment. The Lankan Top Court has set up a five-judge bench to hear the petitions. The bench will be headed by the Chief Justice of Sri Lanka, Jayanta Jayasurya. The petitions will be taken up on the 29th of September. Last week, the government had said that it will revisit the amendment. However, it appears that no changes have yet been made to the draft that has triggered concerns amongst public intellectuals, activists and government critics. The Sri Lankan opposition protested in the parliament when the bill was presented. The opposition parties have cautioned that the bill might take Sri Lanka onto the path of autocracy and dictatorship. The reason behind the growing concerns around the bill are obvious as the amendment will strengthen Rajapaksa's grip on power on the country as the country is expected to return to its previous constitutional status. After the 20th constitutional amendment, the Sri Lankan president can head ministries, he can also appoint and dismiss ministers, he can appoint officials for the police, judiciary and the public service. And most importantly, he can also dissolve the parliament any time after one year. The constitutional experts term it as nothing but a constitutional travesty that can turn the Sri Lankan democracy into a majoritarian, populist and a authoritarian dynastic rule. But Rajapaksa says that he has faced many restrictions because of the 19th Amendment since being elected as the president last November. And Rajapaksa's Sri Lanka's People's Front and its allies had secured 150 seats or a two-thirds majority in its parliament. This, of course, has given them enough votes to change the constitution in any manner that they want.